happy Easter from the Words in Season podcast. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Kara Marie Morris and I am your host. This week I want to talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the week that as Christians we celebrate as he was tried before Pilate, as he willingly chose to lay down his life. No one took his life from him, but he willingly chose to lay his life down for all of mankind who would ever live. He died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And he started appearing to his disciples and it brought, sometimes it, it, it scared them because they couldn't believe that he actually was alive. But as he began to talk to them, they realized this is Jesus. This is the one that we spent all of these time with, all of these years with. This is truly the message that he spoke. And they, he says that Jesus went through all of the law and all of the prophets on the road to Emmaus. And he described it and explained it to him. And he was revealing who he was from the Old Testament. And now he was in the flesh, the New Testament, the better covenant. So this week I want to talk about what could steal the power of the resurrection from my life this week and in my life as a Christian? Thank you for tuning in to the Words in Season podcast. Remember that every time that you tune in, that Jesus has a word in season for you. So Jesus Christ he is the most famous figure of all time. And some people call him a prophet. Some people call him a good man. Some people think, yeah, he had some good ideas, but I call him Lord. I call him savior. I call him alive and I call him the soon coming king. Why do I call him those things? Because I know that's what his word says and he is one with his word. So I wanna to talk to you about how the redemption and the resurrection of Jesus Christ how he bought and paid for us with his blood on the cross, that it was forever, that it was for my spirit, my soul, and for my body. So I wanna talk about how this redemption is complete and it's whole. And there's three different things that I wanna, three different words that I wanna look into in, in different scriptures is that Christ saved us past, present, and future. He saved us potentially, he saved us in our future what we could be he saved us and now we are positionally as we accept him as lord and savior positionally now we are seated in heavenly places so that's our past it was done and now we are seated and that is our present with christ what we are experiencing with him so for, for the future let's go to first thessalonians 4 first thessalonians 4 so for the past let's look at what he did for us and now he has placed us in that seated position in galatians 2 20 it says in galatians 2 20 it says for i have been crucified with christ that means it doesn't matter how old or how young you are whenever you receive christ you were engrafted in you experienced what it was like to go on the cross with jesus because you were there with him because of the place that he took for you he says, I have been crucified with Christ and no longer I live, but it's Christ who lives in me now. And the life I now live in the body is by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So in the past 2000 years ago, that actually happened in time, in a place on earth. And now I get to experience that in my life every day. So that's Galatians 2.20, Ephesians 1. And also what it means to be there positionally is Ephesians 1. Where are we? What is my position in Christ as I have accepted him? Ephesians 1 and starting in verse 20, it says, And now the power that works within us is that same power as the mighty strength that he exerted, that the Father exerted when Christ rose from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly, place, heavenly realms far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and above every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. And God appointed and placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body 
the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So now, in the past, because of what Jesus did, my position changed as a Christian. Now I am seated in heavenly realms, far above all rule, far above all sickness and disease, far above all schemes and plans of the enemy. Because like it said in Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I that lived. I died with Christ. I was crucified with Christ. I identify 100% with Christ. And now it's no longer I who lives. And sometimes experientially, that's the part that I have to work on every day. What does that look like in 2022, working a regular job, having a regular life? What does that look like? What does it look like to live a crucified life? So let's go to Ephesians 4.1. Ephesians 4.1 says, For I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient and bearing with one another in love. And make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit, which is the bond of peace. So we are supposed to walk worthy of this, worthy of the crucifixion, the burial and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. How do I do it? I'm walking in love. I can walk in love. It says, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit, which is in the bond of peace. So my words are supposed to be words of peace. My words are supposed to be words of love. How do I get that? Because I don't always feel peaceful. I don't always feel like I'm loving. How does that happen? It starts here first. And how do I do that then? How do I change the way I think? By getting into the word of God. Renewing my mind will change my actions and my words so that I can walk worthy of what Jesus Christ has done, has provided for. And Philippians 127 says, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the, what is the manner of what's worthy? Like we looked at before, it's being Christ in the earth. It's showing his love, his mercy, his grace. And it's not, it's not the positional thing that we need to change because we have already been seated in Christ. We have been crucified, we have died, we've been buried, we've been resurrected, like it says in Ephesians 1. Now we are seated. We are seated in heavenly places. And now we can live in a place of being right with the Father. That's the part that's done. The positional part is done. It's the experiential part every day that I have to work on, that I have to let this Word of God dwell in me richly. So it changes the way I think, the way I act, the way I treat my coworkers the way I treat my family, the way I even see about myself is only possible because of the renewing of your mind, transforming the mind. Romans 12, 2. It says, Therefore I urge you as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. What does that mean? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means it means the pattern of the world is one way, but the pattern of heaven is another. How do we know what the pattern of, the he of heaven is? By going to the Word of God, going to the Bible. That is what we know that we are supposed to really think like, act like, talk like. That's how we can experience heaven on earth is when we renew our mind. And it's the peace that passes all understanding that will come. It'll change our body. It'll change the way we treat people, the way we see people, the way we understand what's going on in the world is by renewing the mind. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. That means as a Christian, as a Christ follower, I don't talk the same. I don't act the same. I don't watch the same things. I don't listen to the same things. Not because I'm in a legalistic religion because, and if I don't do good, then my, my God's going to hit me and you know, say, oh, you, you're bad, you missed heaven. No, but because I have a living, honoring relationship. And I know when I see things on TV and when I see things on social media and, and I even in words in my mouth, I, ooh, that's not honoring to God. That's not honoring to the life that he has called me to be. And how do I know? Even this morning as I was setting up my camera to, to, to record this podcast, there was something that I said yesterday. And I had to say, Lord, you know what? That, that, that comment was out of line. That wasn't, that wasn't you. 
So you just ask God, and how did I know? I, I wasn't in deep prayer. I wasn't in fasting. It wasn't this deep sin. Why do I know? How did I know? Because just having a simple, open, living relationship with the Father, and it allows me to walk worthy of the calling. And it's so much better to walk worthy because the life not worthy, living like the world as a Christian is horrible. It's like trying to stick a square peg in a round hole, trying to fit into the world, trying to fit in the world. I, I lived that for, for a long time as a teenager. I was born again, spirit filled as a young person, but me trying to live like the world, it, it was horrible, miserable, because I knew better. My spirit even knew better that there was something that I was called to do. But I, I thought, I have to look like this. I have to date like this. I have to, you know, sound like this in my words and I have to make this career for my life and it was like fitting a square peg in a round hole and it was it was so hard and I was it's a miserable place to be trying to live like the world as a Christian but positionally we are in Christ so that's what allows us to experience experience and to walk worthy to walk in his love his joy his peace and living a life that looks like Jesus Christ. So what does it look like in the future? What, what, to, what can we have hope for? So that was positionally and that was experientially. So now potentially, what, what do we have to look forward to because of the redemption of Jesus Christ? In 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 through 18, it says, for we believe that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. Amen. We believe that. We believe that Jesus actually died and he actually rose again. And so we believe that God will bring Jesus with those who have fallen asleep with him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven. This will happen. Jesus is our soon coming King. The Lord will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God and the dead of, in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still alive are left and will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And it says, so comfort and encourage each other with these words. Comfort and encourage each other with the fact that yes, man, Jesus is coming again. That's why we can work whatever, if it's a regular job and you're volunteering and you're ministering and you're loving on people and renewing and transforming your mind, it takes time, it takes effort. But why can we do that? We can encourage ourselves with these words that Jesus is coming again for me. I can encourage myself that this is not it. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm so satisfied in that. I, I, I was trying to find myself for years and years, even as a Christian, trying to figure out what am I supposed to do with my life? But when I released and just relied on him and said, God, I don't have anything else. I have no more answers. He's like, praise God, finally, praise, you know, praise me. Finally, you are releasing your life to me. Now I'm gonna take it and make it something extraordinary, something extraordinary, something you could have never asked thought, dreamed, or imagined. Because you have let it go. You have let your life go into my hands. I can make it into something beautiful. When we have it, it's little, it's small, and it it's, can be good. But when it's with him, ooh, it can be this amazing experience. Experiencing what it's like to be redeemed, spirit, soul, and body. To be completely reliant on him. Am I there? No. 100% no. Positionally, yes. Experientially, no. And what do I look to potentially for the future? Potentially for the future, I look to that Jesus is coming again. That's what encourages me. That's what strengthens me. Is that I, this is not it. This world, it has nothing that can offer me something that will last forever. The only thing that will last forever, the only thing that is eternal is the promise of him. And it says that Jesus, that we will be caught up in the air and we will be with the Lord forever. 
just imagine everything around you right now every every person every place that you're living or maybe you're watching this in your car on the way to work everything that you are experiencing right now it will change the only thing that will change are these words that I'm speaking to you because these words are spirit and they are life and if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you will meet him again and you will live with him forever so let me encourage you with those words that you will live with him forever and then again a second scripture of what it would be like what it looks like for our future because of what happened on the cross first Corinthians 15 51 through 57 listen I tell you a mystery we will not fall asleep but we will all be changed in a flash in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed for the perishable must close itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then saying it is as it is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. That's what happened on the cross that day. Death has been swallowed up and we will see it again when Jesus returns. Death has been swallowed up. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The power of death has been defeated because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a finished work. It is a work where we have been positionally placed in Christ in heavenly places. We get to experience that every day as we allow him to work on our heart, as we allow him to work through our mind and transform our mind to be more and more like him. Our spirit, our soul, and our body have been redeemed because of the blood of Jesus. And potentially in the future, what we can look to is we can look to that day when our King comes back for us, whether we have fallen asleep in death, or maybe we have been here and he's coming back and we experience what it's like to be changed in the air with him. But we will be able to say death, your victory has been swallowed up because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Death, your power has no right over me. That means death in my thinking. Maybe I, it's wrong thinking. Maybe it's death in my body. Maybe it's a, a death of an organ or a death of, a, 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 of a, an emotion, that emotional death that you're walking through, a grieving process. Because of the blood of Jesus, we can say, death, you don't have power over me. Body, you come to life emotions be stable mind be normal family be healed because death is not the end with jesus christ death is not permanent death was not the end hallelujah he made it so that death was just part of the story it was not the end so as i was thinking about this who jesus christ and what his finished work on the cross did for me potentially positionally and experientially in my life what can steal that power from me it's not the devil because he's defeated so what is it what can steal that power from me it was for and for me I heard in my heart that it was a phrase that I would tell myself that I would say at church or listening to a friend who is speaking the word to me or just telling me a testimony or reading the word of God in my regular Bible study time it was a phrase that came to my heart. This phrase is, I've heard that before. And I realized that that is one of the most dangerous phrases for Christians. And that will steal the power of the resurrection experientially in your life when you say, I've heard that before. So I encourage you this Easter, as you're walking through Holy Week, as you're walking through Easter, as you're walking through even the days after Easter, and it, and it pondering and experiencing and reflecting on the, the blood of Jesus Christ, the crucifixion, the burial, the horrific pain that he went to, went through for, for us, but also the triumph that he extended to us. Like it says in Luke 10, 19, it says that he trampled on all of these powers of the enemy, these snakes and these scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. And then he delegated us that power. Then in Luke 10, 20, it says, now rejoice that our names have been written in heaven. As we accept Jesus Christ, our names have been written in heaven and it's a final say, it's a final work. So what can steal 
the power of me experiencing that in my life. For me, I can see that if I start telling myself, if I start thinking, I've heard that before. I've heard the story of the resurrection. I've been to church on Easter before. It's the same thing over and over. Or I've opened my Bible and how many more times am I gonna read these scriptures? What's the point? That is what will steal the power of the resurrection in my life. So the word in season this week is that Jesus Christ has redeemed you. He bought and paid for your freedom so that death has no power over you any longer. The word in season is that you have been redeemed experientially, potentially, and positionally. And now you have been saved spirit, soul, and body, past, present, and future. And the only thing that can steal the power of the resurrection from your life is you. You saying, I've heard that before. Well, it didn't work for me. Well, I, I, I don't know. I've been in church for so long and it all seems so boring and so the same. That is what can steal the power of the resurrection from your life. Jesus Christ, he died, he was crucified, he was buried. He willingly took on all of the shame and all of the sin of the world so that we could know who he is. And he is coming back again. And he wants us to experience that every day. And it's really only us, only me, by saying, I've heard that before can steal away the power of the resurrection, me experiencing what it looks like to have resurrection in my life on Easter and every day. So thank you for watching the Words in Season podcast. Happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday, and God bless you. And God bless you.